how you all doing? So, today I figured, I thought since this is the month of October and we're drawing close to Halloween that we can talk about paranormal stuff. And trust me, there's a lot of it. And I apologize if I keep snorting or whatnot. I'm sick with something. Either allergies or it's a head cold or nasal drip. I don't know. It's just a pain in the ass. That's all I know. So, anywho, um, where did I get it? <laughs> um, okay, I'll start first in the U.S. And then I'll talk about the paranormal experiences I have here in Sweden. But I think I'm going to make a different video about that. Because it's a lot. And I don't want to bore you guys. So, um, it all started in Maryland uh, about a year after my uncle died. Um, and to give you guys a bit of a backstory, uh, my uncle Chris died when he was 20 from, um, I'm going to fuck this up. It's basically the disease that kills athletes on the fields. Um, they basically have a heart attack and drop dead right there. And they're literally young and stuff. And that's exactly what happened to my uncle. But at the time that he died in 1989, this wasn't known yet. Because um, the autopsy re revealed nothing about why his heart failed at age 20. Um, but it's known now. But I just can't say the medical term real well. It's high... <sighs> yeah, yeah. Let, let, let's forget that. <laughs> if you know what I'm talking about, good job. <laughs> um, so, his death was in a way the beginning of me... Um, believing it not only in afterlife, not that I didn't believe in one because I was Christian at the time. Um, but it kind of started my path to wanting to know more about the afterlife and stuff. And then a year later, uh, he was still living with my grandparents at the time. And then a year later, when I was eight, <clears throat> um, my parents brought my grandparents' house and we started living there. Um, I don't know exactly, uh, know when it started, but one of the things that I kept hearing in the middle of the night was footsteps on the stairs, and this is like around two-ish. And at the time, I thought it was my imagination, because I didn't like the dark that much and stuff like that, but then as the years went by, my mom and my dad both said that they heard the same thing on the stairs. And my mom actually one time got out of bed to investigate it, and she didn't see anything on the stairs, and there was no one downstairs. And the only thing that's below the stairs is a closet, and there's nothing underneath the closet. So there's no pipes that would make sounds that would mimic footsteps. And then there was one time where... The laundry door basically started opening by itself very slowly. And then I just said, stop it, Chris. And it stopped. And then it closed itself again. And the thing is, if it would have been a draft, I would have seen that again since then. And that's the only time I ever seen the door did that. So, um, and I would say this when I mostly heard footsteps on the stairs and that happened for like two years, the first two years we were living there and then they finally stopped. And I figured because my uncle finally realized he was dead and moved on because one of the theories about why they linger around is that they don't know they're dead. And considering how quick my uncle dropped dead when he was playing tennis, um, I kind of theorized that he didn't realize he was dead. Um, so, and the, the ironic thing is, it was quiet at my parents' place up until 2013 when my son was born. And we were visiting one night, we, not one night, but we were visiting there uh, for a few weeks back in 2013, about five months after... My son was born. And I'm upstairs in my brother's room. And I'm petting my cat. Who, by the way, died last year. <laughs> and um, I'm petting him. And I was going to be in the bedroom until I heard my brother come up the stairs and stuff. Because he was home visiting as well. 
And my significant other and my son were already in bed, as well as our parents. So I start hearing footsteps going up the stairs, and I'm like, "Uh uh-oh, my brother's coming up. So I give Sosa, who is my cat, a quick goodbye, and then I head to my bedroom. But then I look down the stairs, and I notice no one was on the stairs. And I go down the stairs, and my brother's still watching television. And I'm like, huh. So I'm like, okay. And I go back up to my brother's room, and I start petting my cat again, because, you know, I missed him. Then I hear footsteps go up the stairs again. And I'm like, okay, well, he's Joe's coming to bed now. So I check the stairs, and once again, there was nothing on the stairs, and Joe was still watching TV. And I'm like, yep, Chris is back. <laughs> because another theory they say is that um, spirits tend to come back if there's a lot of energy in the house, usually caused by children, because trust me when I say this, children are loaded with energy. I think my kids can power... A whole entire city by themselves. They have so much energy and stuff. So, and it, it is actually the same kind of case for here too. Like this, this house was pretty quiet for the longest time. And then around the time that my son was born in 2013, activity began to pick up in this house. Um, but I'll get to I'll get to my experiences in Sweden eventually in another video, but I'm just going to stick to the states for now. So, another experience I have is at the Bellar Mansion. And now here's the thing: I never seen anything, or hear anything. I get feelings though, because and I'm going to cover this eventually, also in another vid, of how I'm an empath and. While empaths can sense emotions, I seem to have a heightened sense of empathy because I can also sense the emotions of spirit activity as well. Not to mention know that they're there. Um, Because if something happens, I tend not to be surprised because I already know something's there. But anyway, um, where was I going with that? Oh yeah, anyway, I was at the Bella Mansion and... I don't feel it anywhere else in the house. I only feel it in the cellar. And, you know, the more I watched Ghost Hunters, I kind of wondered if there was something in the cellar that was creating an EMF field, which is electronic magnetic field. And um, if you're sensitive to this, you can have hallucinations, you can feel nauseous and all this other stuff. So I thought maybe there was something in the cellar that was giving off that kind of thing that would make me feel that way. Well, the funny thing is, I don't always feel that. In the cellar I feel that only during May and one time when I visited in May I was standing in one place and I felt it and then I didn't feel anymore and then I went over next step and I felt it again so it moved um now here's the funny thing I've done a lot of research on this mansion and the funny part is that there is like a time gap where there's no recording of anything so I don't, so people don't know who died there or who lived there because there's just a big gap of lack of records during this time point. And it's going to play into another issue, and not another issue, but another um, experience that I had. Um, but anyway, there's nothing in this book, and it's called um, Beller from the Beginning. Um, if you're from Bowie, Maryland, I highly recommend you read it, especially if you like going to the Bella Mansion. And what was that? That was my phone going off. Excuse me. Yeah. Anywho, um, so I've never read anything about someone dying in the cellar. But then again, as I said, there's a big time frame. There's no recording of what happened at the mansion or who owned it. And ironically, this plays into another experience I had, but it wasn't inside the mansion. It was outside the mansion. Um, so here's the thing. Um, the Beller Mansion was built in 1745, or circa 1745, and it has two entranceways. If you're from Bowie, you know what I'm talking about. One entrance is a row of trees going, that's directly in front of the mansion, um, but it's like dissected by Tulip Grove Drive. And then there's another one on Beller Drive. Um, the, Be- the one on Beller Drive, people can still drive under it. But those are 
two entrances going up to the mansion because the Bel Air used to be a big state. Well, with the one with the one entrance, um, this one entrance that's directly in front of the mansion that Tulco Drive dissects. Um, there used to be stories like about how a little girl got killed by a carriage there. But there's one thing that I had an experience with, and it was at my old patrol post when I was at Tula Grove Elementary. Um, anyone who knows me personally, you know what I'm about to say, <laughs> who's ever heard this story. Um, and this is probably the rarest, most paranormal experience you can ever have. And that is, I saw a full-bodied apparition. Um, it is of a nine-year-old boy, um, and what had happened was I was on patrol duty. I was just about to cross students, and, um, um, I was facing this way, um, and there was, like, a house, and then a hill with a lot of houses, and then plus, um, there was a bush. That bush does not exist by the way, anymore. And then you have Tula Grove Drive, and then you have the other side of Tula Grove Drive, and then down there, it's also a hill. So there's a, so I was on top of a big hill, in other words. And this lane that I was patrol, I think it's Traymore, um, there's like rumors that a little girl hunts the houses alongside this old entrance, because, you know, like I said, she was killed by a carriage. But I never heard anything about a little boy before. So anyway, I was about to cross a group of students, and I happened to um, look directly in front of me, and there was no one coming, but I looked directly in front of me, and as I was crossing in the group, I see this nine-year-old boy, who was about my age, start climbing up the hill, and I shout out to him, get off the grass, and right before I could finish that sentence, the boy vanished right in front of me. <laughs> it was funny. Uh, I laugh and I'm confused at the same time, even to this day. But I laugh about it because of the insanity behind it. My first thought was, oh, the boy ducked behind the bush. So I made sure there were no kids coming up behind me. I crossed the street that I was patrolling and I looked behind the bridge. Or not the bridge, but the bush. And the little boy's not there. And I'm like, hmm... I wonder where he went. So, I w like I said, I was on top of a hill. So I looked down to see if I could see anyone running. And I didn't see anyone running. I didn't see anyone that looked like the boy. And I'm like, ha. Huh. Did he go? No, he didn't go this way. I know he didn't go my way. I know he didn't cross the street because I would have had a heart attack if he did that. And I'm like, what the hell did I just see? Because the boy, here's the thing. I, this is full frontal, by the way. This is nothing that I saw out of the corner of my eye. This is full fucking frontal, okay? And the boy was solid. He was not see-through. And just like that, he vanishes right in front of me. And the, what's so ironic is he was wearing one of those uh, outfits you would see boys wear during the Victorian era, where it has that little sailor kind of suit on. That's what I was seeing. And... And even to this day, and I think this is like, um, oh, here we go with doing math on my fingers. Okay, 19, 29, and then, so this was about 17 years ago. No, I'm wrong. Bad math, bad math. Math and I don't get along. Um, this was like 27 years ago, and I'm still questioning what I saw to this day. Um, because what else can you go with other than, oh, someone has a transporter system that they're using and maybe they transported him out of there. It's ridiculous, but I mean, I literally saw someone full bodied disappear right in front of me, just vanish. Um, like think about how Harry Potter and then, oh, what's the word? You know, go in and out of places like, uh, it starts with an A. Anyone know what I'm talking about that's a Harry Potter fan? Ugh, fuck. Anyway, think of it like that. Or think of it like a trans, like transporters in Star, Star Trek and stuff. So that was the biggest paranormal experience I ever had. 
And it's actually the rarest experience that anyone can have. And it's something that a lot of ghost hunters and a lot of paranormal investigators want to see for themselves. And it was funny how I had it because I wasn't even trying to have it at that point. And most people were like, were, are you, were you afraid? No. I was confuzzled by what I saw, though. And I'm still confuzzled by what I saw, even after all these years. Because my mind has a hard time grasping how the hell can someone vanish into thin air, other than, it's a ghost, and stuff like that. Now, here's the, here's the ironic part. You know how I was saying before how there seems to be a like, big chunk of history missing from Bellar Mansion? All right, um, the last owner to own the house rec in records was Robert Bowie. And, you know, his sister Rosalind was living with him, or Ro Rosalind or something like that. And the next owners were the Woodwards, like James Woodward and stuff like that, people who had the triple crown horses and stuff. Um, so there's a big chunk of that missing from the late Victorian era to like the end of the Victorian era. And I could not read any accidents in the other recorded stuff. So that makes me think that whatever happened to this boy happened during the time that they weren't keeping adequate records at the mansion. So that made me bum. Cause I was, cause I was hoping that if I found something that would be somewhat be able to use to help me back up this claim, but I can't even do that. So, yeah. And, so that's the biggest paranormal experience I ever had in the States. Or ever, really. And then, another thing that happened when I was still living in the States was, it was minor, but one time I visited the house that my um, grandparents used to live in. Uh, it happened, like, a few years after my grandfather died and I had just gone to the bathroom and I was in the bathroom and then suddenly I had a, a, a feeling like I should not open the door because I might not like what I see you know that feeling and I'm like I wonder if my grandfather is outside the door or walking down the hall and my body's letting you know don't open it otherwise you might get spooked out and that's the only time I ever felt that in that house, actually. So these feelings don't happen often and stuff. So, but then that house was sold, so I can't say if I ever had it again, but I didn't have it before that either. And then I think the last experience I'm going to leave you guys with that happened in Sweden was, or not Sweden, fuck, the States, uh, Maryland to be exact. Um, I did a model gig at the Knights of Columbus in Bowie. And I had come in through the side of the of the building, and I was heading towards the dressing room slash bathroom, and I got a weird vibe. Now I've been in this place before, but I always entered it from the front, like when I did like rehearsal dinners or did stuff for soccer when I was in JV soccer, and I didn't feel anything then. But I was doing this fashion show, and um, for the, the um, Bowie Chambers of Commerce. And I'm in, I just felt nervous and I couldn't understand why. I mean, obviously it was, my, it was a big, it was my first modeling gig that I was doing runway and it, it didn't pay, but it, you know, it was a good experience. And, um, I just felt this sense of being watched and this warning that was hanging in the air and I couldn't figure out why I was feeling that because I'm an empath and stuff. And I'm like, well, maybe it's me being nervous about doing this and stuff. So I get ready and stuff. I was like the first person to model to arrive. Then my mom and her, this other person who's on the Chamber of Commons needed to go get something. So they left me behind. But then she says to me, oh, the caretaker is very wary about leaving anyone alone since uh, this guy named Bosler was murdered in the 1970s. And they never solved the, the murder. And I'm like, that's, the, that's what I'm feeling. When it comes to murder victims, their spirits tend to put off a vibe, a vibe of warning. They're like, get out of here. There's something wrong here. You shouldn't be here. That kind of thing. And um, so when they were left and it was all by myself, I decided to do some ghost hunting. And I said, is the spirit of Bosler here? 
If so, give me a sign. And there was a loud bang coming from the bathroom. It didn't scare me because I knew something was there. So I went in the bathroom anyway and checked, checked, and there was nothing on the floor that would have made that sound. And I tested the doors, and it sounded like the doors. You would have needed force to make the sound that those doors did. So, yeah, those those were more experiences of the paranormal in Maryland. And in my next video, um, I'm going to talk about my paranormal experiences in Sweden. I hope you enjoy this. And if you wanted to hear any more about my paranormal experiences or you want me to talk about something else, don't hesitate to tell me in the comments. Also, leave me a comment if you want to say something or ask me a question. Like this video if you like it. Please subscribe to my channel. I'll be absolutely delighted if you did. All right, guys. Take care. Bye-bye.